Welcome to The Importance and Power of Reading. I'm Michelle, the computer lady, your host. During some awful dark times in America, black people were denied the ability to read, to learn how to read, to write, or to even own books. And that has hampered our communities up until this day. Now we're going to have important conversations about the importance and power of reading. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this brand new segment. I have an amazing guest. He's phenomenal. His name is Deontay Bolden, and he runs Bolden Productions. Deontay, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome, and tell everybody about yourself. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Deontay Bolden, CEO and founder of Deontay Bolden Productions, which is an umbrella for many things that I do. I'm into acting, playwriting. I'm a playwright strategist. Um, uh, director, producer, I do it all. But uh, under Deontay Bolden Productions, I also have the Bolden Academy where I help to coach writers on how to turn their stories into scripts, ultimately for film, TV, or for the stage. So I'm always the one that authors, many authors come to when they're ready to take their book to the next level. You know, one effective tool of doing that in marketing is turning into a production. And I'm also the founder of the amazing Bolden Awards, which we'll be talking about honoring and awarding those who overcome obstacles and adversity as well, achieving excellence. So I do a little bit of everything here in Atlanta. I just love being creative. Well, that is absolutely phenomenal. I got to hear you speak on Clubhouse. And so I was like, got to get you on here because you're doing so many things. And we're both in the Atlanta metro area. And so that thing about connecting and making sure that people know positive role models for our children and for our parents is so important. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, now, I think it's important. Oh, absolutely. So let's jump into a few questions about the importance and power of reading. And this way we can engage our audience and some of the students out there are going to be watching and going, I know Mr. Deontay, I know him. He came to my school. So it's going to be so much fun. Awesome. So first question. Did you like reading as a child? I didn't enjoy it as much. Um, one can say that I was kind of one of those um, uninspired children to to write uh, to read. Um, I, you know, one of the issues I found growing up is that, um, and I'm trying to change that through the course of my journey of being an author, was that there was nobody that hardly looked like me. So when it came to me approaching, you know, reading, I was kind of uninspired, you know. Um, at the time, I felt like I was lazy, but I realized that it was a lot of, you know, being uninspired because I felt like I couldn't relate to a lot of the stories. And based off my life, life experiences, uh, you know, a lot of books weren't, you know, relatable to me, you know, that were in my school. So I could say no, but that trying to kind of change over the course of, you know, my school year is going into junior high school year and really tapping into writing because in order to be effective writer, you have to be an effective reader. So. so you were uninspired. Who was your major influence or who inspired you to become a reader and that journey leading you into writing? Was it mom, dad, grandma, a teacher, a mentor, whom? Yeah, it was actually my English teacher, Miss McLean. Um, she really had a sought the gift that I had for, you know, writing and, you know, a lot of times I could, I could never, um, me and math did not get along at all. If you give me a math problem, math course, I, you know, math was one of my subjects that I didn't do, you know, as good as I wanted to do in it. Um, and it wasn't my strength, but when I could write, I tell you, I could write a paper, you know, language arts reading, that was kind of my thing. And I was good at it, but I just was uninspired. But when she caught on to the gift of me being a great writer, she was teaching me how effective reading is for me. And she was like, you know, you do, do have a gift, but you need to read so you can be able to, you know, kind of, you know, model after some of these great authors as you create your stories. Because she was always fascinated when I would write a paper, you know, she would share with the class because it was that good. So, yeah, Miss McLean definitely was um, an inspiration to me getting into reading and writing. Well, Miss McLean, wherever you are out there, thank you so much because you have sh shaped Deontay to such an amazing man. So, we thank you and we wave at you wherever you might be right now. So, now that you've got that love of reading, I got to ask you a question. 
When did you start reading as a child? Do you remember how young you were? Um, well, you know, reading was definitely something that was a part of my elementary school year because um, we had AR, you know, um, accelerated reading was definitely something that they implemented into schools growing up. Um, and it was like, you know, you get a certain amount of points and they would just, you know, kind of bribe us in a way to read, to have the pizza parties. So it was definitely introduced to us at a young age, you know, and even though I wasn't inspired, you know, I kind of did it because I, you know, I was very competitive. So it was introduced to me at a young age. It was definitely part of my elementary journey. So I would say, for, you know, six, seven years old, first grade, you know, those were kind of when I started catching on to, you know, reading. Well, that is awesome. Now, what was your favorite book as a child? Do you remember? Uh, I definitely love Curious George. Curious George is one of my fond memories. I love the uh, the, Berens, the Bernstein Bears. That was um, one of my, those collection of books was like one of my favorites, you know, my early childhood memories. But anytime I would go to library, book fairs, I was always fascinated with Curious George. Well, Curious George is an amazing book. For me, it was Madeline. 12 little girls and two straight lines and then there was madeline because i went to catholic school and so for me that was my first book that i fell in love with and it was one of the books that my sister gave me because my sister was my inspiration for reading oh shout out to you now sis. shout out to my big sis i love her so much now when we talk about reading and what we're reading today. What are you reading right now? What are the books that inspire you right now? What's going on in your busy world? And what are you reading? And some of the things that you might recommend to others. You know, I'm, I'm really into, I'm fascinated with one motivational book. So, um, you know, I love T.D. Jakes, his, you know, plethora of books, um, Devon Franklin. I'm into motivation because motivation really keeps me going um, and it really keeps me on a track, especially with doing this award show and just facing a lot of things that I face in the industry. It's backstabbing, manipulative, you know, with so many different people and I have to keep myself motivated. Um, Steve Harvey's also another one. Um, Higher is Waiting by Tyler Perry. So those those books really inspire me, but I'm also a supporter of those who look like me and are on, you know, the level I'm on, you know, independent authors. So, um, you know, I'm interested in, you know, my friend who is an author, um, you know, she has a book called Why Am I Here, you know, um, and she's amazing. Um, uh, Naomi. Naomi, um, she she has an amazing, phenomenal book. So I'm always supporting uh, books, you know, and authors who, you know, are independent. So I have like my little bookshelf, you know, supporting them because just as much as they support what I'm doing, differently abled and so many other things, I want to make sure I'm pouring and supporting them as well. So, well, you told me that you're an author and you have a couple of books. What are the titles of your books? Yes, yeah, so I have two books. One book uh, is a self-help guide book called Purpose Pains, really where I um, talk about my journey of how I use my pain to push me towards my purpose and really break down the academic pains to help people to see it from a positive perspective instead of a negative perspective, you know, dealing with my brother um, and the loss of him and how all that shaped me to be who I am. And then in honor of my late brother who passed, he had a um, muscular disease and he was differently able. I wrote a book titled uh, Differently Able, which highlights four children going into middle school with various disabilities and they're trying to fit in with their peers and they find themselves the center of pranks of everyone's jokes and laughter. And because of that, they um, write a letter to Santa begging to make them normal for a day so they can see life on the other side. And they take that magical journey. But the great thing about it is when they get to the other side, they realize that life isn't as grand as they thought it would be and that they're different because they make a difference. So that, that those are my two books. Wow, that is amazing. And I'm sorry for the loss of your brother, but you turned that into inspiration. And I know that your book is going to inspire so many children that are seen on the outside. So kudos for that and kudos for using your pain for healing. That is absolutely phenomenal. Now, as we talk about books, now, you, do you have children? Are you married? I don't have children yet. Um, I'm planning to have a tribe soon, but not too soon. Um, and then um, I'm not married yet. I'm still single. Okay. 
So you're part of what we call the village. And so what I'd like to ask you, because you go into schools and you teach this whole thing on writing plays, on writing scripts, on play, being a playwright for kids and for authors as well. Do you think it's important for parents and caretakers to have books in the home for children to access? Absolutely. You know, children model after what they they see and what they do. And I think it's important if you have books lying around, children will be inspired to read. You know, um, it's this thing now where technology, you know, every time you turn around, a child has a gadget in their hands, but yet rarely do they pick up a book. And I think it's important to teach the basics and the fundamental um, importance of reading in the homes. You know, um, my mom was an advocate, you know, for me growing up, making sure that I read and, you know, getting back to to, you know, picking up a book and reading to children before they go to bed at night. You know, I think we need to incorporate, you know, that into, you know, the daily plans, you know, um, you know with parents and children, because now it's just sad to see that a child would rather just stay and play video games all day than to pick up a book. And I think that's where we are going wrong when it comes to the importance of ch children reading. Well, that is well stated. And you know what time it is. Hey, we got to take a short break for a commercial and we're going to be right back with my amazing guest Deontay Bolden. See you soon. Are you a company, business, or service that believes in social responsibility? Would you like to make a positive impact? You can. You can sponsor this program and be seen by 2 million viewers on the PIC TV network. Call 770-367-1268 for more information today. It is so wonderful to engage children in reading. And it's so wonderful to have such phenomenal guests that come by here and share with us their reading journey. And we're back with Deontay Bolden. He's a producer, he's an author, he's a screenwriter, and he's doing so many great things for the children in our community because he teaches them how to screenwrite. But what's really important is his journey, because he said he was unmotivated. And part of that being unmotivated because he didn't have authors that looked like him. He didn't see children that looked like him in books. And so he's doing something about it. I think that's absolutely phenomenal. Now, as a professional, and you're kind of an educator too, because you do go into schools and you help kids learn <laughs> screenwriting. What do you think of the state of literacy for our children? Young, young children, adolescents, and even our adults in the United States right now. What do you? What do I think the state of literacy is? Um, I think just like I was saying before, um, I kind of answered um, that a little bit. Um, I think we're just in a microwave society now where everything is just so instant, you know, nobody has the patience to really sit down and read a book. Um, you know, there's so much going on on social media and you can scroll through Instagram and TikTok and you can see all of that. But I think when it comes to reading, children are just unmotivated and uninspired. I think we have to get back to making reading an experience for children again. Um, and making it more relatable to them, you know, of course, they're going to have to learn different things that they don't really necessarily um, want to know about, you know, or um, and things like that. But I think the state of literacy right now um, is just really, um, we're, we're kind of missing the mark a little bit. Um, I noticed even like going and talking to children that it's not a lot of you know, time for reading, you know, as much as, you know, within schools now, because everything is just get on a laptop and do this and do that. So I think we just have to make it more of an experience again for children, because now, you know, we have, you know, technology and it's kind of becoming an unknown thing, you know, for reading again, you know, and we have to really get back to the basics. And you're absolutely right, because I was talking with another sister friend of mine, and we talked about that children don't understand cursive writing. Mm. We don't practice writing in school like we used to. Yeah. When I was in school, everybody had a chance to read in front of the class, but that was many moons ago. And so doing things to bring that back and talking about bringing reading back, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that our parents and our caregivers out there 
what are the, some of the things that they can do to help shape a child's mind and help them read better? Um, of course, like I said, purchase books, have them in the homes, um, make them reading a part of, you know, their daily routine. Um, children model after what they see. So if they see mom and dad reading, you know, they're going to want to read as well and be a part of that experience, making it something for the family to do, um, incorporating that, you know, um, figuring out what the child loves, you know, and try to engage books around those specific topics. I know for me, I was fascinated with the solar system um my mom i drove my mom crazy because i had my mom buying me different stuff for solar systems and, and things like that um but you know incorporating that into the reading you know making it a competitive experience you know hey after you finish a couple of books you know um you know rewarding them with something that they may love you know just really finding ways to make it more exciting for children and not making it feel like it's just like a chore to do but you know showing them that and letting them discover on their own what kind of books you know they like to read as well you know? and it says train up a child in the way they should go and when they grow older they will never depart from it. and i think that's going to be included with reading as well and I know that that's absolutely correct. Now, you talked about being uninspired. And what I know about male children and boys in particular, because I have four brothers, is that boys usually read for information. They, they, they want something out of it. It's just not that they're going to sit down and quiet their minds just to read, but they want to get something out of it. So knowing that, how can we help our boys in particular quiet their minds and read better and read more um i i know that many men like myself growing up as and boys the attention span is short so i think also just having that relatability um you know to be able to understand the child and what they are interested in um i think when you have the attention of people and you're able to um get their attention and grasp their attention on different subjects or interests i think the experience of reading tends to be a little bit more exciting for them um and also just kind of get them to a place of you know where they can be to themselves and have that moment you know and read um i think sometimes too with you know a particular boys because i used to actually work in a, a ymca um, boys tend to want to have an experience with someone. So it's like if they have their friends or inviting their friends over and they kind of read together or you join them and read as well and it'll be a part of that experience, you'll find that it'll be more exciting and more interesting to them to be able to, you know, read and, and discover new things. And I think it's just fun to be able to um, share an experience with them and, and get them more excited and engaged and read. I love that. And I love the fact I did not know you worked for the Y and having those programs and having boys read together. That's an awesome idea. Maybe a boys book club even uh, because girls have book clubs all the time. So that I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And wow. Boys, parents. Adventurous. So, you know, boys may want to pick up a book that's dealing with a superhero or something like that. You know, you just got to get their mind engaged in it and realizing that. Um, it, it takes the focus off of the reading and then wanting to explore and figure out about these different characters or a villain or something like that. So yeah, make it a part of the experience. I love that. That is absolutely amazing. Wow. See, another great idea. And that's why I always like having different guests on because you never know what somebody's going to bring to the table. Now, since we're talking about reading and we're talking about boys, let's talk about both boys and girls. Can you give me three or four points that we can go over that we can engage our parents and our caregivers on how we can get both boys and girls to read more and better every day and just some little things that our parents can tweak maybe. So if they're not reading, what we can do to bring them up, because I don't know if you knew, if children don't read well by the third grade, if they're not on reading level, they have a chance of living a life in poverty or going to prison. And we want to prevent that. Um, one I've been stressing is to make it a part of a daily routine. Um, you know, simple as, you know, reading together before bedtime, you know, um, making that a part of something that they do along with their homework. Um, I think that's important. Um, 
allowing them to explore different types of books that they love you know i think you can uh, let a child explore their own individuality and based off of the books that they want to choose um you know some girls you know may be into the barbie books and then you have one you know girl that may be into animals you know so allowing them to explore their individuality through different children's books um i, I think you know um having competitions or like fun assignments to do with books or games is important as well um, because it really brings more excitement and it brings more engagement um, with the child and it makes it more of like of an experience for them so those are different things that I think that can be incorporated and you know just like we were saying involve the friends you know um, you know so many different um, things you can do as a parent and as an adult with your child, you know, starting a book club with friends and family and really just getting, you know, more excitement back into the reading. And once the child sees that everybody else is having a great time with it and experience with it, then they're going to want to be a part of that too. And you can make it more of a community thing. So. That is absolutely amazing. And that's absolutely great advice for our parents out there. So parents, if you're thinking about ways to get your kids reading and getting them to read more and on great level, Deontay has given us some amazing information. And on that, we got to take a short break and we'll be right back. Since 1877, Jackson State University has been training students for a life of service and leadership to impact our global society. Ranked among the best HBCUs in the country, Jackson State University offers 47 undergraduate, 37 masters, one specialist, and 13 doctoral degree programs. Whether you're interested in the arts, education, public health, the sciences, or business, we're here to take you from ready to JSU ready. Visit jsums.edu and apply today. Hi, I'm Michelle the Computer Lady author and children's book publisher of the Mommy Readers Collection series of books. Well, we know how important it is for us to read, but we also know how important our public hospitals are. We're here in Atlanta. My public hospital is Grady. They saved my life. And I would like to give back, and I need your help to do so. I created a new fundraiser called Building Towards Our Future, and what's going to happen is we're going to make sure, you and I together, that Grady keeps on serving the marginalized, the poor, and the indigent in the Atlanta metro area. All right, stay tuned for more announcements. I'm going to be telling you how real soon. Thank you for joining me in this fight to make sure that we can live with Grady. Watch the Pick TV Network. We are back with the importance and power of reading. I've got a phenomenal guest on, and we've been talking about get our kids more interested in reading and how to get them up on their reading level. Deontay, you have been phenomenal with this. Now, I got another question. How has reading shaped your career? Because you do a plethora of things. You're an author, you're a producer, you're a screenwriter, you even have an award show coming up. So how has all this reading shaped your journey? Oh, it has been a major part of my journey. Um, one, reading, um, you know, exploring and learning new things through reading is important for me how to write scripts and things like that it really helps to enhance my experience and knowledge and what it is that i'm doing you can never stop learning you're always a student at hand so reading and it's fundamental into being the creator that i am um and studying different things. But one of the things I always teach, even in the Bolden Academy as well, is that if you're gonna be a good writer, you have to be a good reader. You know, reading also helps to inspire you because if you're trying to write a certain genre or, you know, you're trying to get into the script writing field, you know, you want to read other scripts, you wanna read other books um, and things like that. So you can be able to get some ideas, but it also helps to inspire you because in the middle of reading, I'm like, wow, this is something that's giving me an idea sparking a new 
topic or idea for me as well. So reading has definitely shaped, you know, my, my career in so many different ways. If it wasn't for reading, I don't even think that I would be successful in what it is that I'm doing. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons why we know the importance. Now, you've heard about book bannings. Um, people are banning books in different states. Because, and so what I think is even more now, it's even more important for our children to read because the most important thing in your life is being able to comprehend and reading is part of that journey, but also having a well-rounded voice of knowledge. And that's what you have, and that's what I'm getting from you. So how do we address our parents on the book bands and how can they circumvent what's going on around us to make sure our kids read those books and other books that are on their level and even above their level. So would you suggest a library or just exploring those independent authors that you don't see? Absolutely. You know, there's so many different things. I mean, even in the midst of a book ban, there's so many different ways to get in, you know, around books, libraries. You know, I was fascinated with all of the different, um, events that libraries have, you know, local libraries, um, book fairs. I just miss getting back to those book fairs, you know, and going and, and being a part of the experience. You know, now they even have now where you can go to different events and, you know, you can see local independent authors and book signings and things like that. So it's just important, you know, and even some bookstores even have where they have like um, readings, you know, with the local author. So there's so many different things that you can do to be a part of an experience, even in the midst of them trying to ban, you know, books, you know, they're still everywhere and there's still um, authors and, you know, books out there and experiences that they can just be a part of to just um, really tap into the reading and, and, you know, take it back to when those things were important. Because I remember where book fairs were just a part of the school curriculum. You know, you go to a book fair and get books and all those different things. So I just think it's a great experience in so many different ways to, um, you know, have that experience. And I think you're absolutely right. So book fairs, because we have a book fair here, a couple of them actually. The, the Cater has a book fair here every year and mm -hmm. it's phenomenal, all kinds of authors. The other thing is, because you work with independent authors, I think we should seek out more of our independent authors that represent who we are. So you can see yourself in a book. Our kids can see themselves in a book. I think that's really, really important. I write books, you write books, and there are a lot of other sisters and brothers out there that write books. And our kids need to be looking at and getting some of those books in order for them to have a well-rounded experience on this reading journey. Now, as we go forth, you know about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, and the fact that you're in the arts, but you're also a writer. The arts, when we talk about production, is part of technology. Well, how do we get our children more interested in STEM, science, en engineering, and math, and how can we lift them up and get that thirst for knowledge around these subjects? Because we know it's going to be important and it helps to uplift our communities when our kids can fully participate in everything that this life has to offer. Yeah, I think it just goes back to the experience again. I think if you're going to give something to children, then it has to be an experience for them. Um, you know, me teaching the art of <clears throat> playwriting and script writing, you know, some of the kids may not be interested in it. And if it doesn't like, you know, tickle your fantasy or your 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 interest, you know, and in the beginning, you know, you have to find how to make it more relatable to them. You know, teaching art of script writing, I was able to incorporate, you know, some of the my favorite movies, Lion King, things that they could relate to, things they could be like, yeah, I know who that is. And, you know, different actors like Michael B, what you know, young girls are like, oh, I know who that is. He's hot or whatever. Um, so it's just those experiences and that relatability that would draw in you know um 
you know, a child's interest. So, you know, for that is, you know, finding games, you know, uh, that goes around the different subjects, you know, finding a way to make it a, a, a group, you know, um, experience. Um, all of those different things, you know, you have to kind of get in and engage in with the children so it can be more fun, you know, for them. And they won't look at it as, oh, this is something that you're shoving down my throat. They can look at it as something that's exciting, it's something that can, you know, pique their interest interest as well. So I just think that, um, you know, when it comes to children, I just find that relatability is so important um, and having the experience, you know, because they want to feel like that they are part of something that's going to um, interest them, but also involve them as well. We need to get back to involving our children more into what it is that we're doing because children don't like to be talked at. They like to be, you know, um, a part of the um part of the world as well and i think that's important and what we're leaving out well i think you're absolutely correct now you've got an award show coming up very very soon i want you to tell everybody about the award show the date the time where they can get tickets Yes, so I do have an award show, an amazing award show that's been um, taking up a lot of my time and, 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 and um, just been such a phenomenal experience. The Bolden Awards, um, you know, I went to a lot of award shows and have been nominated at award shows because I am a creative myself. Um, and one of the things I felt like was missing was the experience of everyone just feeling like that we can, you know, network and engage with one another. Instead, it was just, you know, a fight to try to get to know people and everybody was just sticking their nose up so i said i'm going to create an experience where people can really come together and really feel like that they are a part of the experience so the bowling awards is where bonus meets greatness where we're highlighting and honoring and awarding those who overcome obstacles and adversity is while achieving excellence. Um, those who have been overlooked in the industry, you know, our honorees, you know, are people who are in their 70s getting back into pursuing their dreams of acting. We have people with autism, people who are homeless, uh, people who, um, you know, uh, have dealt with weight challenges and so much more, you know, people who've overcome cancer. So it's just a beautiful experience. And we're going to be honoring these amazing individuals on May the 20th, 2023. Our golden carpet, because we're not doing traditional, um, is going to start at 6 p.m. 8 p.m. is going to be the award ceremony, which is going to have an amazing time. And not only are we on an award show, because I said, I don't want to just be an award show. Um, we're honoring, but also it's going to be a resourceful experience. So we're going to have speakers speaking on bullying awareness, autism, mental health awareness, something that I've struggled with. So not only are you coming here to see people get awarded, but you're also getting resources as well that can really help you and someone else as well too. So just come and be a part of this experience and we have some amazing, phenomenal performers as well. Well, I think that's absolutely awesome. Now, Deontay, you have blessed us with this interview. You've blessed us through your reading journey and how you're helping people every day. I want you to take this time and tell everybody where they can get your two books so they can be inspired, especially the children's book, because you know that's, what, that's where my heart is. I love kids and I love children's books. So where can they get your book? And I've already got in, on the screen, you can see your production company for the people that want to reach out to you because you are a screenwriter and you help people write screens from their books. Yeah, so um, of course, even for the awards show, it's www.theboldenawards.com, but you can actually go to www.deontaybodenproductions.com too, which will lead you to the uh, website. I forgot to mention where they can get tickets for the awards show. Um, but for the books as well, www.deontaybodenproductions.com, there's actually a store on the website where you can go in and purchase both books. I will personally sign the copy and send it to you. Um, if you want to know more about my academy, you get on there and message me as well as links to all my social media as well. Um, and if you just want to kind of get to know more about what my upcoming events as well, definitely go to the website as well. So it's www.deontaybodenproductions.com, D-E-O-N-T-E, B as in boy, O-L-T-E-N, productions.com. Well, that is amazing. I really appreciate you coming on. I love what you're doing for the community. And... 
keep shining your light on the importance and power of reading. Thank you so much. Folks, that wraps up this episode of The Importance and Power of Reading. So let's make sure that we're modeling reading for our children. Let's make sure that we have things that are relatable and give them challenges. Deontay was amazing as he gave us some really good things that we can do to help our kids know and appreciate the importance and power of reading. I'll see you next week. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle the Computer Lady, the host for The Importance and Power of Reading. We're going to have some great guests on. Dr. Hudson from Jackson State University, Moses West from the Moses West Foundation, Gina Gadsden, and so many more. And we're going to talk to you about the importance and power of reading and how we can get our kids to read more. Come join me on the PIC TV Network.